What are the signs that you are looking for Jesus in your life? Today is the first Sunday in Advent, the beginning of the Christian year. You can tell that we're nearing Christmas. All you have to do is listen to the radio music being played or be in stores as the music is being played. And just when we're ready to go to Bethlehem, to see the signs of a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths lying in a manger, just when we're ready to begin that journey, the appointed reading for today's scripture has nothing to do with Bethlehem. It has nothing to do with holding the infant Jesus in our arms. Instead, it is a message about that which makes us want to flee to the arms of Jesus. I invite you to hear this appointed scripture reading from Luke chapter 21, verses 25 through 36. There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress among nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint through fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the power of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that the summer is already near. So also... When you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life, and that day does not catch you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. The journey of Advent would be so much easier if it just stopped at Bethlehem, allowing us to see the sign of an infant wrapped snugly in swaddling cloths. But that's not where Advent begins. The message we hear today from the Gospel of Luke is not about the journey to Bethlehem. It's about the journey to the return of Jesus. It is about heaven and earth passing away, but the words of Jesus remaining eternal. As we are on this journey today, we begin a journey of Advent where we are looking for signs of God's presence, signs of Jesus' presence in our lives, so that we might become signs of God's presence, signs of Jesus through our lives. In John Boyer's book, The Great Hunger, it is a story about a stranger who moved to a farming community and it did not take long for the message to be sent that this stranger wanted to be left alone as he put up no trespassing signs on his property. Well, there was a neighbor child who wanted to pet the neighbor's dog. And so she went to crawl under the fencing. And as a result, she was killed by the dog. It was a time of great distress within the community. When the farmer went into town, nobody would talk to him. The store clerk refused to wait on him. The person who sold seed refused to sell seed to him. The tension grew and grew and grew until finally the father of the girl who had been killed by the dog went and took his seed and sowed it on the stranger's land. When the stranger saw what had happened, what the, what the farmer had done, his neighbor had done, he cried and he asked the neighbor, why did you do this? 
to which the farmer replied, I did it to keep God alive. Advent is the journey of faith, looking for signs of God's presence in a trembling world. Advent is the journey where we are invited to be signs of God's presence in a trembling world. Court cases underline tensions that have been revealed through generations. A Christmas parade, peaceful, is disrupted by the sight of an SUV speeding through the participants. A sight that is horror to see. It would be so much easier if Advent just led us to Bethlehem and let us stay there, but it doesn't. Advent is a journey of faith that takes us beyond Bethlehem to a trembling world, to a world that is caught up in the midst of challenging questions and a world that is caught trembling Advent does not begin with Bethlehem. Advent begins with the promised return of Jesus in Luke chapter 21, verse 27. As Jesus says, Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Before leading us to Bethlehem, Advent leads us to the return of Jesus to his promise, to his command, to live on guard in the present as we live with faith into the future. I recently received a, a text from, a, from a, a message from a young friend who asked me if we were living in the promised time of Jesus' return. It's not the first time I've heard that question. In fact, when I was a teenager, I struggled mightily with that question, with fears and what it meant to live and to wonder about the return that Jesus had promised. In preparation for today's message, I typed into the search engine, uh, signs of Christ's return. Within 0.68 of a second, I had 110 million responses being reported in the search engine. In less than three quarters of a second, I had confirmed for me that there were many people who were wondering about the question that this young friend asked me about the promised return of Jesus. In 1988, there was a book entitled 88 Reasons Why the Rapture Will Be in 1988. There were 300,000 copies mailed to pastors, unsolicited. In fact, I was one of the pastors who received that co copy of the book. It was written by a man named Edgar C. Wisenant, who was a former NASA engineer and a Bible student who predicted that the promised return of Christ would occur between September 11th and September 13th in 1988, the days of Rosh Hashanah, the beginning of the Jewish New Year. In fact, as he wrote this book and as he mailed it out to pastors, over four and a half million copies of the book were sold. The author had these words to write. He said, only if the Bible is an error am I wrong. And I say that to every preacher in town. If there were a king in this country, and if I could gamble with my life, I would stake my life on Rosh Hashanah. Well, his predictions were taken seriously by some to the point where they ran up great debts. In fact, there was a 
Christian uh, broadcasting station that interrupted programming to provide instructions at various times about the return of Christ. As I mentioned, unfortunately, many people quit jobs, ran up huge debts, and lived with no concern for the present when, when this prediction of uh, Christ's return was made. Well, we're now in 2021. 1988 is in the rearview mirror now. Why is it not publish other books and continue to make predictions about Christ's return until 1997? The promise of Jesus' return in the 21st chapter of Luke that we read from earlier today is not intended to result in the avoidance of the present. In fact, it's the exact opposite. It is Christ's command to be engaged in the present. As we look forward with faith to Christ's return, it is the command to live with faith in the presence of Christ now. It is a faith-filled reminder of the difference that Jesus makes in our lives and of how we should look for signs of Christ's presence in our lives now. It is a message of expectancy and of hope. One, Christ, one Christmas in a New England church, there were persons who were preparing for the annual Christmas play. And there was a child who came late to the practice after all the parts had been given out. He was a, uh, a boy, and he was quite distressed that he was not going to have a part in the Christmas play. So it was decided that he could play, play the role of the innkeeper. Well, this upset the child because he knew that of all the people in the Christmas play, he would be the only one who would reject Jesus. So they practiced for the Christmas play, and he participated, until finally the evening came for the play to be presented in the church social hall. As he went to the social hall, and as he waited for his time to tell Mary and Joseph that there was no room for them in the inn, the time came. Mary and Joseph knocked on the door of the inn. The boy opened the door wide looked at them, and when they, when they asked about, is there any room in the inn, instead of saying there was no room in the inn, instead the boy said, come in, I've been expecting you. Well, that's the message of Advent. Come in, Jesus. We've been expecting you. We've been expecting you to return and the promise that you made. We've been expecting you to be born and the promise of the birth of the Savior. Come in. We've been expecting you. What are the signs of how you've been expecting Jesus in your life? May God bless us in the journey of Advent as we welcome Jesus, whom we expect. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Amen. Oh
spirits by thine advent here. Disperse the gloomy clouds of night, and death's dark shadows but to flight. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to Let us pray. O God, on this day, we ask that you would help us to live with expectant faith, looking forward to the promise of Jesus' return, looking forward to the promise of Jesus' birth, and grant God that as we live in your promises, that we might live with expectancy as we see signs of Jesus in our lives. For it's in our Savior's name we pray. Amen. Well, friends, may God bless you on this Advent journey as you look for signs of Jesus and as you become a sign of Jesus. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Amen.